projection methods of teachers in the school system. There are different methods through which you can project the total number of teachers that are required in the school system. We're going to look through them. But however, there are basic requirements that will be needed. What are these data that are required? One, you need the total student enrollment in the school system. You need average number of hours per received per week per student. You need average number of students taught per teacher per unit of time. You need average number of hours taught per teacher per week. You need the benchmark on student or, te or pupil teacher ratio. And we need the benchmark on the average class size. These are the data, data you required while trying to project the total number of teachers that will be needed in a particular school. Now, let's look at one of the methods. The first method here is working through using the student-teacher ratio method of projection. In this case, you will need to know the total number of students that are on ground to determine the total number of teachers that will be required. And here is the formula. And if you see the three arrow here, represent teacher required, the STS here requires student enrollment in year T, and ST arrow here represents student-teacher ratio. These are the things you will need case. It means you need the student enrollment, and you need the student-teacher ratio that will be required for you to determine the total number of teachers that is needed. Now let's look at this illustration. Going by this illustration, it said if the secondary enrollment in a state in year 2019 is projected to be 280,000 and the approved student-teacher ratio in the state is 40 to 1, how many teachers will be required at this level in 2019? What this simply means is that looking at it by projection, 2018 uh, by projection in 2019, we said we'll have 280 enrollments in the school. But going by the student teacher ratio, it said 40 students to one teacher. So this, with this, we can easily calculate the total number of teachers that will be required to us. Now, the total number of teachers that will be required will be 280,000 over 40. Do you remember the 280,000? That is this student enrollment over the total number of student-teacher ratio, which is 40 here. That gives us 7,000. But however, you need to think that before the year 2019, there would have been some teachers at our ground. So let's assume, in this case, that the stock of teachers left in 2018 is 5,200. How many teachers will be required in 2019? So in this case, this is the total number of teachers you required. But however, out of this number, we are saying that you still have some teachers that are on ground which is they have 5,200. So how many will you then need? To get the total number you require, you subtract the existing number of teachers from the required number. And that will give us 1,800, which means we will need a total of 1,800 that will be added to the stock of teachers that are already on ground. So if you add 1,800 to 5,200, it will give us the 7,000 that is required. Now, let us calculate using the full-time equivalent teacher requirement or the teacher workload method. This is another method, looking at the workload, the workload that the teacher is going to carry that will determine the total number of teachers that will be required instead of working with the total number of student enrollment. So how do you go by this? Now, what are the data required? First, you need average number of hours received per student per week, and you need the average number of hours taught per per teacher per week. How many, when we look at the average number of student hour, and you look at the average of the number of teachers hour. Now, let's look at this step one here. So calculate the average audience of the school. This is expressed as average audience over the total student period per week over total teachers period per week. So for you to calculate the average audience, you need the total students period per week. What is the total student period per week and what is the total teacher's period per week? Now, this takes us to this example. If the total number of teachers in a school is 30, with total weekly teaching load of 900 periods, and the total student enrollment is 450 with weekly period of 22,000, you can calculate the average audience as follows. How do we do that? Now, let's look at this by summary. Summary of data said total number of teachers is 30 from here. We pick the 30 from here. Now, we look at the total student enrollment is 450 
we picked the 450 again, it's total student enrollment. Now, total teachers weekly period is 900. The total number of weekly period required by teachers is this, we have it here, that is 900. Now, again, we have the total student weekly period is what, 22,000, that is why you have it here. So, going by this, Going by this formula, it says total student period per week over total teachers period per week. So look at the total student period per week, 22,000, over the total uh, teacher period per week. So in this case, if you divide, you give us 24.4. 4 is not up to what you can approximate. So we leave it at 24 because we we'll have a whole human being. This implies that the average, on the average, a teacher teaches 24 students per period which means per period the teacher is teaching 24 students then on the assumption that the average audience will remain constant then you cannot do a teacher requirement can then be projected in this case you are having the mind that where average period is going to remain constant that means teacher is going to be, to be teaching 24 students per period so if that is going to remain constant, the average audience, then we cannot project the total number of teachers required. So going by this, we have, if you have an average audience of 24 and projected enrollment of 100,000, you can forecast a future teacher demand figure as follows. So what do you do? Projected teachers will be what? Projected enrollment over average audience. You remember we have calculated the average audience? And now, all you need to do, we have the projected enrollment of 100,000, the average audience of 24, that is what we brought it here. That gives us 4,166.66. Again, because humor has no fraction, so you approximate, that will give us 4,167 teachers that will be required to teach 100,000 students, working by the average audience. Again, let's look at the step two in this instance. Going by the step two, you said to calculate the full-time equivalent teacher requirement, the total teacher weekly teaching period is divided by the benchmark. In this case, we are looking at the full-time, the full-time equivalent. Working by the full-time equivalent, all you need is get the total number of period of teachers period per week and divide it by the average the approved average period. That is all you need. Now let's look at an example. It said if the total period, uh, the total teacher period in a week are 900, and average teacher, the approved teacher average period is 25, the full time equivalent teacher will therefore be what? Now what we are saying here is let us assume as approved by law that the, the teacher is to teach an average period of 25 periods in a week. And you have 900 uh, periods in that week. How many teachers will be required? Now, what will happen will be 900 over 25. Because 900 is the total number of teacher period per week. And we are saying that each teacher must teach only 25 periods in a week. That means you divide 900 by 25 and that will give us 36 teachers in this instance it means to teach 900 to, uh, to uh, occupy the 900 period per week you need 36 teachers against the other that was oh 30 teachers are teaching 900 per week so with this you are working with the benchmark as stated now let's look at the student per class and our thought by teacher method or projection based on class size. Again, you can project the number of teachers based on class size. How will you do this? There is a formula. And this formula here, you have T equals E over G, where T is equals a full-time equivalent teacher required. Then the G, E represents the enrollment, and the G, the average grade or average class size. This is the formula. So let's look at an example here. In this case, the teacher is permanently in is permanently in charge of one class. This one is only applicable, where, especially in primary school, whereby a teacher is attached to one class, not by subject, not by discipline. So let's see what happens. Said so if enrollment is projected to be two hundred thousand 
an average class size is 40, that is 40 people per class, the full-time equivalent teacher will be what? 200 over 40. What is he saying? That in a class, you have the maximum of 40 students, 40 pupils. So when you divide it, that will give you 5,000 teachers that will be required. So these are the methods that are used when you are calculating. So have it in mind here that in this case, you cannot apply it like in secondary school whereby you teach according to subject or you teach according to discipline in the tertiary institution but whereby a teacher is permanent in one class then you can apply this work through it and master it